Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Calling All Devs, our weekly Q&A series where I take questions live from you, the Star Citizen backer, and pose them directly to our Star Citizen developers, usually over Skype, and usually uh, with a minimal amount of, 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 of chasing. It's, it's like Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner half the time, and I honestly don't know which one I am at any given moment. Uh, on the show this week, we are getting started with... Uh, Star Citizen Live Game Director, uh, Mr. Todd Pappy out of our Foundry 42 office. Todd, how you doing, man? Hello, sir. I'm doing well. Welcome back. Two oh, weeks in you. a row. Two weeks in a row. Woohoo! Um, I, got, I got questions for you. I got, I got UI questions. Usability interface. User interface. Usability interface. Questions for you. Um, basically, how we interact with the game, how we find people in the game, how we I can identify the people in the game. Your first question submitted by backers, voted on by backers. There are no floating name tags above heads like in other games. How do you intend for players to identify each other? Will there be a difference between identification within Star Marine, the video game within a video game, or and the persistent universe in this regard? So, well, to answer the Star Marine versus PU standpoint, uh, I think we'll need to look at you know, what we're going to do there and, and how we're going to identify it. Um, we used to have them. One of the reasons why they got turned off is because of planets. And um, basically, we, uh, in the past, is, it's always been a, a Z-up environment. Uh -huh. And with planets, obviously, you have a non-Z-up environment. And um, that was causing a lot of issues where the players were walking and then the name tags were, you know, kind of staying <laughs> like that. So, yeah, so um, it's on the backlog to fix. Uh, it's, it's something that the team will tackle. It's just they've been, you know, working on higher priorities uh, uh, as far as like the kiosks go, the PMA, VMA, and then um, obviously the ship HUD, you know, rework. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is, is, is that, is that your, uh, would you say the difference between Star Marine and Persistent Universe? Now we know the Persistent Universe has the planets that they're around and that's obviously, uh, does that mean that we're considering bringing the name tags back for the Persistent yes. Universe? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I think we'll, we'll look and see how it, how it looks. Um, part of it is just going to be players. Um, and maybe it's, it's one of those things where we show more friendlies versus, uh, versus um enemies and I, I think that those are some of the discussions that we'll we'll have just because i know players will be able to you know kind of differentiate between ai as well as players but um when you have that big sign above your head and uh, somebody doesn't have that big sign above, above their head then you know obviously that's a very very quick dis distinction and yeah. Um, we want to see, um, at least I want to see how much we, we blur the lines. Gotcha. All right. Uh, your second question this week uh, has to do with the overall uh, uh, readability of the HUD, including spe specifically a Moby Glass. Um, a lot of folks have trouble with uh, the, the, the brightness or the gamma of the uh, display against you know bright backgrounds or dark backgrounds. Uh, this question asks, will we ever be allowed to adjust the brightness, the gamma, the stroke around lettering? Uh, will we be able to adjust the UI uh, to help uh, those of us who see things differently see things so better? Yeah. So one of the things that's um, that's also on our EU feature team one, which is basically our UI team, uh, is is redoing the front end. So the, one of the first things on there would be you know the, getting the gamma um, so that you can actually uh, shift between light and dark and actually do proper gamma cal calibration. That's that's one of the things I I really want to get. Um, and then from there, it's uh, talking about with the Moby Glass. Like in 3.1, we, we actually did a, a, a darkening, uh, you know, of the actual screen. So mm -hmm. when you pull it out, it, it makes it much, much clearer. Uh, so uh, hopefully this question, I don't know when this question was submitted, but hopefully after they played 3.1, you know, they, they can see it a hell of a lot better, uh, even in br bright and dark um, environments. Uh, Zane has... has mentioned that you know that is something that we want to look into as far as the brightness adjustments you know in, in HUD and overall um, and then the conversation actually diverged into like the ship HUD and and the legibility of that and and you know the issue that people are having in really really bright environments and so him and Ali are still in 
kind of technical talks of how we want to fix this and um, do we want to do kind of like a little fog glass or something like that so then um, it it outlines the whole uh, thing versus drop shot drop shadows or a stroke outline um, so it, it, we're still in in kind of discussions about that and then I think some tech will need to be developed in order to to really clear that up Gotcha. I think I think the most important uh, aspect of this is that we're aware, and uh, we've 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 got our we've got our we've got our top people working on it. Yeah. Top people. All right. Sorry. Anytime. All right. All right. I'm gonna let you go, man. Thank you for. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking time to be on the show today. All right. Take All care. Right. Bye. All right, thank you so much, Todd Pappy. Uh, now moving over to our own Los Angeles studio and uh, senior systems designer, lead systems designer, we'll find out, Kirk Tomei. Kirk, how you doing, man? Hey, good. How are you, Jared? Good. Is it lead or, se or senior? Uh, lead. Se lead. Okay. I can, I, I, never mind. I, I, it, it's becoming, a, it, it's start, starting to sound like a recurring joke, but I really am just that clueless as far as the tiles go. It's fine. we got a lot of people at the studio. Yeah, no kidding. We're fast approaching 500 now, so... I can be maybe I can be excused for for getting here once in a while. I got a question for you from the backers, voted on by the backers. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is, but we're gonna see if you've got what, what you've got for us. The question is: Is there an ETA for development of the Caterpillar section modules and overall modularity? It's kind of two questions, but I'll allow it. As was shown in 2015, with replacements of the cargo modules with med bays, living sections, other and other functional compartments. Uh, okay, so while there is a plan for them, uh, there is no ETA. Uh, it's it's on our backlog, and um, fortunately, it's not uh, it's not on the upper tier for priorities at the moment. And so uh, we're not precisely sure when we're going to get to them. But uh, we do plan to still incorporate uh, modularity in things like the caterpillar. So you can have uh, the uh, deployment bays uh, or the habitation modules instead of the cargo bays that are there now, um, and uh, allow us to do things like. Um, to the uh, retaliator um i'm sorry no yes yep. the retaliator uh, uh and the endeavor for the for the bomber sections and the endeavor yes uh another place where we probably use it is in the pioneer when um, you plop the ship down on a planet surface and uh, create the outposts uh the modularity in um being able to specify uh what uh, parts of the outposts that you create and how you you know you fabricate and position them uh, will most likely incorporate that system, and so I imagine it'll be something like uh, almost like uh, uh, you know, like cartridges in a in a in a gun, or like uh, you know, like Lego Lego pieces where you <laughs> swap out swap out sections and, and put them in. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as just uh, slotting in uh, you know one entity because we do need to do things like uh, hook up uh, the um, the in, the interior um, the object containers for them hook up all the connections for uh, all of our pipes, like uh, for power, heat, and uh, any type of uh, damage that might have to hook up the lighting system, uh, anything like uh, doing the portal for uh, going in and out of that section. It's particularly going to be interesting for the Caterpillar because uh, those have huge side sections in which uh, those are uh, transitional portals from the exterior to the interior of the ship, which are two different zones. And um, solving that challenge along with being able to accommodate, uh, uh, you know, I think that most interesting thing is going to be when you have a section that you can put in and it looks um, different, uh, not only in, you know, just visually, but, uh, you know, we should be able to change things like the, in the Caterpillar, uh, this uh, high walkways on the side. You know, there's no, there's no reason why you can't completely change them to be stairwells or ladders that go down or have a different network of, um, of, of like walkways in the top, maybe you know, uh, make it one big section or three, three, some, uh, being able to accommodate all that connectivity and um, uh, the uh, really the way that uh, you're going to be able to uh, transition from one of the modules to the ship or from one of the modules to another module is going to be the challenge there. Yeah, I mean, lots of things on the drawing board. We've talked about lots of things over the years as far as the different modules go. Um, but yeah, like I said, it, it, it's not it, the, the we have the internal modularity. You, you hear us talk about that on Ship Shape all the time. It's how we build out the different variants. Uh, but the player facing modularity is a whole, is a whole nother uh, kit and caboodle, as my grandmother would say. Um, right. Also, I just want to reiterate uh, with when you're talking about the Pioneer um, before. 
people start running off and saying, Pioneer's going to have modules. He did say probably. He did say most likely. We are still exploring that um, option. Don't yeah, we? also, uh, we're, t we're talking specifically about using the tech yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah, so so don't just before anybody runs through it's like the pioneer's gonna have modules. It's it's not this not 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 not, not the same way and not confirmed. Really. We haven't built, started to build it out yet. Right. So all right, Kirk, I'll let you go, man. Great. Thank you so much. All right, no problem. All right, take care. All right, thank you so much, uh, Kirk. Now we're going to Austin, Texas, and our very own Rob Reinecker, a uh, 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 big systems designer, super dude. Well, not even gonna try anymore. Rob, how you doing, man? Doing all right. How you doing, dude? Good. Lead systems designer, senior systems designer, uh, brand. Uh, I, I am a lead. Lead. So, okay. Yeah. Yes, I sir. I uh, know. You're the guy I go to when I need information. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it. We're gonna change the title now. The guy I Hopefully go to I when I need information. You. All right. So we got a question about quantum travel. Uh, basically, this question has to deal with uh, uh, the distance between planets and Crusaders' moons. Now, right now in the, in the game, uh, we have some pretty, we, we have some pretty, uh, not hefty, but uh, there, 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 there's some heft at least to the travel times between Crusaders' moons. Obviously, the distance between planets are going to be even more than that, and then eventually, you know, going between planets into the far reaches of a system, looking for hidden things like like uh, jump points and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. we'll, right now, we are trapped in our seats uh, while we quantum travel. Is that the forever intention or do we foresee a day when, when our players might be able to get up out of the seats during quantum travel and go perform other actions on their ships? Yeah, no, that's definitely something that CR has talked about quite a bit. Like he wants to be able to get up and, and walk around and, and do other things while you're in quantum travel. Um, he's you know talked about you know, messing with your cargo, you know, wants to fix items, you know, like things break down maybe on your trip or, you know, something starts to overheat. So you got to go and, you know, deal with that. Like, uh, so it, it's definitely something that we want to do in the future. It's just not, uh, the, the, the current focus, but, um, yeah, like I said, the, the distance between the planets are, are, you know, enormous compared to, you know, just the, just the moons of Crusader. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're doing things right now with quantum travel to try and you know reduce some of those times with like the quantum splines and or the the planetary spline stuff and and, and all that. But um, it, it's it's still going to be substantial between planets. So it's it, we have to fill that gameplay with you know something a little more interesting than just sitting in your seat. And, and we understand that. Uh, so it's it's definitely coming. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, it's it's it'll be there at some point. Yeah. Uh, when I think about it, I always think of that scene in Star Wars. You know, after after, after the Millennium Falcon gets away at light speed, and and Han comes walking to the back, yeah. you know, bragging that you know I told him I'd lose him, stuff like that. That's so it, yeah, th 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 those those moments, and then of course you know fixing things and all that stuff. It's 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 integral to this kind of thing. So yeah, um, you know, it's like you, you got to eat, you got to you got to sleep, you got to you know do do some of these other things um, to take care of your your person as well, right? So it's um, it, it's it's definitely not going to be uh, just a static sit in your seat and kind of watch the stars go by. That's that's not not interesting. Yeah. So, but there is interdiction stuff. Exactly. You know, people people can pull you out. So you know, don't, well, that, that's why you leave sit. Chewbacca in the co-pilot seat exactly. while you go back. Exactly. See? That's how. You, all right, man. Uh, thanks so much. I'll let you get back to work. Yeah. All right. Cheersy. Thanks, right. man. Take care. See you. All right, and last but certainly not least, we come right back here to, uh, where are we? Los Angeles, California, and a lead vehicle team ship artist, uh, Elwin. Elwin, how you doing, man? What's up, man? How's it going? Good. Uh, is your title still the same? We've been... I can't keep yeah, up anymore. It's, lead, it's always lead been ship artist. lead ship artist. Lead ship artist. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, 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 appreciate, uh, I appreciate your look right now. What, what, what is this? Is this a... Uh, is this a... Darth Sidious by way of Abercrombie and Fitch, or no? This is a. I need tunnel vision so I can finish my three two oh, ships. Gotcha. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, ships are what I'm calling about. Uh, got a question here for, uh, submitted by the backers, voted on by the backers. Um, it's an interesting question. I've actually gone around to several developers uh, to talk about this. Uh, you're the one that gets lucky enough to get recorded. Um, the, the the question reads: So many of our ships come used. Uh, beat down, worn down, uh, in another word, dirty. Uh, why is this? And will we ever be able to clean our ships? Sure. So I'll take that as two different parts. Mm -hmm. Part one, 
why do they come dirty um, so we're not intentionally attempting to make dirty looking ships but adding wear to them and sort of dust gives all of our vehicles a sense of it being lived in and used but that also lends to the making it more of a realistic experience right so it helps us make the asset as a whole feel a little bit more real um, and it gives it a little bit more um, volume as well because you get a lot more variation across the materials on the surface right so it's just it just looks better it's better to do it that way um, but the way we're setting up the materials are in such a way that we have a slider that we can pull you know from zero all the way up to one and that'll change how much wear you're actually seeing on the material surface so right now i can actually go into cryengine and go ahead and slide that back and forth and see the wear uh you know become worse and then sort of recede a little bit and the intention is that in the future when you use a ship over time that slider will be programmatically moved in engine in order to sort of simulate that you've been using this ship for a long time and so it's getting dirtier and dirtier and you should be able to go clean that up and then bring it all the way back down that way you have a cleaner ship now there are some vehicles where it just simply doesn't really make sense from a visual standpoint to ever give you a perfectly pristine version one of those examples would be something like the caterpillar or the reclaimer even a brand new version of those ships it just probably wouldn't look perfectly right if it was completely clean so there'll be some level of wear and dirt on that even at its most clean version but then you'll have ships like the razor or the m50 where it makes absolute perfect sense to have a perfectly pristine paint job and so once we've got those mechanics hooked into the actual gameplay the goal is to allow that slider to move back and forth programmatically and to allow players to you know get a cleaner ship if they want and then see it deteriorate over time Go to a car wash, as it were. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you answered both parts. I don't got anything to add. I do want to make one suggestion, though. You, you, you got a slider that goes from zero to one. Let me submit a slider that goes from Lando to Han. <laughs> I'll talk to the programmers. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just, it's right there. It's right there. All right, man. I'll let you get back to work. All right, cool, man. All right, take care. All right, later. Bye. Well, everybody, that wraps up this week's edition of Calling All Devs. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, you can submit your questions for consideration each and every week up in the thread, up on Spectrum, and don't forget to vote. Uh, for Calling All Devs, I'm Content Manager for Global Video Production, Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.